The top comment on my last talking video was for Ferncloud. Thanks, Alma Z Rice Bean. You might notice that Ferncloud isn't a very common character in my videos, and it's not like I don't like her, I just don't find a lot of the common jokes you could make about her very funny. When it comes to characters like her, it's hard to make jokes at her expense unless she's the straight man in the situation. Oh, Ferncloud, she has so many kits, it's a joke that's been made a million times in this fandom. But the fact of the matter is that most of her children die, and other, less first Arkish queens have had more or nearly as many with more kittens surviving overall, and it kind of makes this joke archaic. Sure, Ferncloud has seven and that's quite a bit, but Snowbird of ShadowClan, who is still alive, has had nine. Additionally, calling a cat a baby machine or whatever, I, ugh, that's just dripping with some sort of weird sexism that I don't subscribe to, and we'll get back around to this later. Fern Kid is one of Brindleface's kits with nobody in the first arc. Her childhood isn't entirely special. She is dragged along on a baby hunting mission by Cloud Kid in the snow, but she's largely an accessory to this event. I don't think her or Ash Kid are even named until she is an apprentice, which is pretty silly. There are people I've seen who have the theory that kits were usually named at their apprentice ceremonies in the early books, uh, barring Cloud Kit, but I think it's much more likely the kittens just weren't considered important enough characters to be named in the first half of the arc, especially seeing as we start seeing their names pretty soon after. Speaking of names, Ferncloud is one of those first arc cats that we don't see named until arc 2, and people were not happy about her name back then. I know I've mentioned that people didn't like Hawkfrost before, but Ferncloud was also the enemy of the early traditional leaning crowd, which I think is really funny. We take it very much for granted, characters like Hawkfrost, characters like Ferncloud nowadays, but back then it was like, oh no. It's funny actually how the traditional naming stuff has changed over the years, because way back when it was always like, it was called traditional naming because they were trying to get people to be in line with the first arc of books. They were very unhappy with every every arc of books that had come after the first arc of books, but nowadays traditional naming is more like, oh, I have decided these headcanon rules that make the naming system more realistic, and it's like, sure, okay, you go. But what I know traditional naming as is what it was when I was like 14, which was, um, how dare you guys uh, listen to the books that came after the first arc even though the first arc had one whisker and we hate one whisker. Anyways, out of her and Ashfur, I like making Ferncloud the darker colored sibling. This is petty, but you always see similar looking animal siblings making the girl a lighter color, and I do not care for this trope. So years ago, I just consciously decided to make her darker in color with less contrast, kind of like if you compared a normal gray spotted tabby with a silver one. As Fernpaw, after she becomes a named character, Ferncloud's main role is that of uh, Dust Pelt's honestly inappropriate love interest. While there isn't a very large age gap between Dust Pelt and Fernpaw like there is in most other uncomfortable warrior cat's relationships, he's still an adult. None of the book cats, as usual, consider his interest in Fernpaw odd. While we usually tend to ignore this particular example as being some sort of an early series animalistic weirdness, that doesn't make it any less strange. Dustpelt takes an interest in Fernpaw almost directly after she's apprenticed, and while it's a plot point that she was apprenticed a bit late, it's creepy. It's blatantly creepy. Fernpaw may have been apprenticed late, but she was still a child by the time she was. I know you don't want to think this about one of the first series characters, but his relationship with her is predatory. He doesn't keep his distance, he's noticed multiple times fawning over her, and he gets excited at the prospect of taking over her mentorship alongside her brothers. I know that the levels in which Warrior Cats is or isn't animalistic weren't set in stone by the time this was written, but they are now, and recently Victoria Holmes herself has described apprentices as teenagers, so by today's standards, and honestly, maybe even the standards then, they've always been somewhat implied to be teenagers at that age. Dustpelt is a huge creep. His interest in her also seems to cause him to neglect Ashpaw slightly. When something is going on, Dustpelt is at Fernpaw's side, not her brother's. He's supposed to be a responsible figure as a mentor, but his attention is clearly not on his responsibilities with Ashpaw. Both of these characters are young and need some level of protecting. If he is leaving his apprentice's side to go protect and look after Fernpaw, who is looking after Ashpaw? Additionally, his belief that he would be able to train both Ashpaw and Fernpaw at the same time is implying that he does not think that he needs to give his full attention to Ashpaw as well. Fernpaw suffers the loss of her mother alongside Ashpaw when she's used as bait for the dog pack. 
Uh, when Brindleface is used as bait, not when Fernpaw is used as bait. <laughs> she suffers the loss of her mother alongside Ashpaw when Brindleface is used as bait for the dog pack. This causes them to seek to avenge her by participating in the relay race of sorts organized to defeat them. She also, alongside every other ThunderClan apprentice, kills Bone. She's not really a huge character in either of these events. She loses her mentor, Darkstripe, to exile when he gets caught trying to poison a child. She's reassigned to Longtail afterwards. Despite weird, horrible rumors you might have read in lying Warrior Cats fact videos that you have been tricked into believing by malicious people, Darkstripe never harmed Fernpaw in any way. He did poison a child, but it wasn't Fernpaw, it was Sorrel Kit. Ferncloud and Dustpelt have two kids old enough to be apprentices by the time the next series comes around, and three more in the nursery with her. This isn't actually super rapid, it's just that a lot of time has passed, as we learn in Firestar's quest that the first batch was born at the very least four months before Squirrel Flight, who was eight moons old at the time of the second litter. I understand that this sequence of events makes Spiderpaw and Trupaw over a year old, but Squirrel Flight's called recently apprenticed in the same sentence that they call her eight moons, so we're really just knee deep in first and second arc time randomness. We can't really use kits or apprentice ages to measure this time period properly overall, especially when we consider how long poor Whitewing stayed an apprentice. But we know that cats are pregnant for two months, we know that Sandstorm and Firestar were gone for a few months before that, and we know that Squirrel Flight is eight moons old. So Ferncloud had a litter soon after become a warrior, and then another more than a year later, but we're not exactly sure how long. Her relationship with Dustpelt, both as an apprentice and as a queen, is one described as if she's the only cat that he isn't rude and sharp with, which is cute and all as a fictional concept. But if you know a guy like this in real life, run as fast as you can in the other direction. Not to be Moon Kitty, professional kitty cat red flag detector, but the first sign was that he was into her when she was eight months old. Um, but I digress. Ferncloud loses two of her second litter of kits throughout the second series and loses Shrewpaw as well, leaving her remaining living kits at the end of the new prophecy, Birchpaw and Spiderleg. Her third litter is born just before the Power of Three begins, and they're much smaller and younger than Jay, Lion, and Holly at the time. Those two are made apprentices and outcast, and then Ferdcloud dies in the big battle with the Dark Forest, as does Fox Leap. Then Ice Cloud and Spiderleg die of green cough at different points between The Last Hope and The Apprentice's Quest. This leaves the last Ferncloud kid alive right now, Birchfall. Just Birchfall. Birchfall being the father of both Ivypool and Dovewing, Ferncloud's got descendants in both ShadowClan and ThunderClan, even though the ThunderClan ones are related to basically every other cat in the entire clan, but let's not get into that. So her legacy isn't dead, despite the fact that six out of seven of her children are. Spiderleg also had two kits before he died, but they both got killed too, Rose Petal only recently, which is a shame because despite a lack of screen time and some early bad characterization in Bramblestar Storm, Rose Petal is pretty cool. Ferncloud isn't really a character in the foreground of Warrior Cats. She lived in the nursery for her whole life, and then, like a few, quite a few other cats such as Sorreltail and Hazeltail, her last main series book Alive is The Last Hope. Something significant, however, is that she, much like Daisy, did a lot of helping other queens and litters in the nursery. Most notably, she stepped in to help suckle Squirrel Flight's adopted litter when she, of course, couldn't produce milk for them. Her and Daisy together also spent a large amount of time looking after said kittens when Squirrel Flight proved to be pretty restless about the nursery. They consider Ferncloud and Daisy like mothers to them in the same way that Squirrel Flight was. The extra nursery queens in general are vitally important to clan life, especially considering all of the possible problems that could arise when taking care of kittens. They've also been a staple of the series since the first arc, which is more than you can say about a lot of the clan traditions. And I think when it comes to Ferncloud in particular, our surface level assumptions about her are largely correct. She's sweet, and she's kind, and she cares deeply about the kits and her clan. And while she got into a relationship basically right out of the nursery, and never really had any time doing normal warrior's duties after being promoted, seeing as she stayed in there over a year after her last litter was born, I'm going to assume she stayed there because it's what she enjoyed. She probably made a conscious decision about becoming a nursery queen after her first litter was born. The one thing everybody knows about Ferncloud, however, is her death. Not how it happened, why, or what she was doing, that being strong bite to the neck, because it was the battle against the Dark Forest, while she was defending Brightheart's kids in the nursery, but instead, they know why Vicky chose to kill her off. She says herself, You have yourselves to blame for Ferncloud's demise. 
I have had a lot of complaints over the years about the way Fern Cloud skulks in the nursery, churning out kits and never taking part in anything dangerous or difficult outside the camp. Well, all along I knew she was capable of fighting as fiercely as any warrior when it came to protecting the young of the clan, so I put her in the thick of the battle to defend the nursery, and she got killed! Poor Fern Cloud. And she's not wrong about the fandom's assumptions about Fern Cloud, that she's useless for being in the nursery, that she's a baby machine or a lazy cat or taking advantage. Demonizing the female characters is something that's been deep-rooted in our community since the beginning, largely simply because it's a fandom space. I'm sure you've seen it yourself, anyone who's deep in fandom has seen it. People who go at lengths to defend all the male characters while going out of their way to pick apart and exaggerate any tiny infraction a female character has ever committed. It's a lot of what led me into being such a defender of characters like Dovewing when I was younger. The people who hate them tend to be doing so with a huge double standard. Daisy, who largely fills Ferncloud's role alone nowadays, still gets this kind of lazy cat treatment from fans, except somehow even more so seeing as she is never even trained to become a warrior. But people who say things like this, given time and experience outside of their tiny fandom space, tend to shed these sorts of opinions. Back when there were large problems, when hating characters like Daisy, Ferncloud, Squirrelflight, Dovewing, and Blue Star were at their very peak, everyone in the community was like 12 years old. There are so many more mature, rational adults in the community than there were 10, 15 years ago, and I do feel like the fandom, at large, doesn't hate characters like Daisy or Ferncloud simply for filling a feminine role anymore, even though you still see these sorts of opinions in fringe spaces. Obviously, though, we don't actually have ourselves to blame for Ferncloud's demise. If or not an author of Warrior Cats decides to do something has very little to do with us. While Vicky might have felt like teaching everyone a lesson with that one, it was always up to her. Keep in mind, too, when considering the authors, that these books are written two in advance, or so. So, while we're enjoying the first book of Arc 9 this spring, they will, at the very least, be writing the third book in the arc. That means even if we have all decided that we absolutely cannot stand Frostpaw for some reason, the authors will have no idea about that community reaction. Likewise, it makes me wonder where exactly the books were at when Vicky initially saw the reaction to Ferncloud being in the nursery all the time. Surely it was somewhere in late Power of Three after her last litter was apprenticed, but she remained in the nursery. Anyways, Ferncloud is just sort of sad. She's largely happy in life and positive despite everything, but she's lost so many of her kids, and to see her last two die right after she does from Starclan must have been frustratingly painful. Her loss is disproportionate compared to a lot of other warrior cats, having lost her mother as an apprentice and several kittens over her life, and it's not as if that sort of loss goes away when a cat goes to Starclan, seeing as they still watch reality down below, even if they're reunited with their children. Granted, the logic of StarClan when it comes to this sort of thing is an absolute mystery, especially after Squirrelflight's Hope, a book where Squirrelflight's dead mother encouraged her daughter to stay dead. Anyways, that's about what I have to say about Ferncloud. Sorry if it was largely unspecific this time. She's overall just not a major character, but she's a good segue into other cat topics. Anyways, give me the cat you want me to talk about in the comments below, assuming you haven't been picked in one of these videos before. Keep in mind that I don't want to do a casual video like this on Bramblestar, Thistleclaw, or the Cursed Breezepelt Trio of Too Much Discourse. Okay, just a quick note, I'm not planning these to be of a certain length. Like, I swear to you, I am not planning this out. But ever since the first talking video, they have been, like, between 12 and 14 minutes somewhere, every single one of them, that was not on purpose. I'm sure there's a cat out there like Running Wind that I would only talk about for four minutes and then it would be like, well, gotta go.